Uh, so uh, I'm about to start. Uh, feel free to move to the front because we are going to try this at the end of this presentation. Oh, yeah. Well, if not, I'm sure that uh, Clement will catch me. <laughs> Why and when to write uh, a Quarkus extension? Thank you all for, uh, for joining. Uh, I was a little bit worried that after Clement's demo, you'll all run home trying to move your workloads to Amazon. Uh, but luckily, this is not the case. My name is Yanis. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. And uh, I write Java for almost two decades now, uh, most of which is focused on open source, open source projects, uh, including Quarkus. Today I'm filling in for Roberto Cortes, which, was, uh, which had the initial inspiration about uh, this topic, but unfortunately he was not able to make it here today. Uh, I'm excited to be the one that will deliver this presentation because uh, it gives me the opportunity to help you get a better understanding of how Quarkus works internally and to, to somehow demystify the magic around Quarkus extension. I would try to be as pragmatic as possible and uh, describe and uh, deliver you uh, real world cases where extension can help you promote the adoption of your reusable components, emphasis on real world. And I will try to tone down a little bit the two technical stuff. So in other words, this presentation is like a how to guide on how to create extensions uh, in order to help you deliver uh, your code to uh, other teams in uh, your organization, or to share your code uh, within multiple projects within your team. So, Quarkus extensions are really amazing. If you've ever been in the past in a Quarkus intro talk, most likely you've encountered, uh, you've seen uh, a slide like uh, this one, which describes how Quarkus brings the best of breed software, and uh, all this is done through the use of extensions. You can use Hibernate, uh, Restesi, Apache Camel, and all that uh, great technologies which uh, consist the Quarkus ecosystem through extensions. What exactly is an extension? An extension is a module that you add to your project in order to enable some sort of behavior. That behavior can be runtime, so for example, code that runs under certain conditions when you run your own application or at build time, which means that Quarkus extensions influence the way that your application can be built. And this is something that existing extensions do all the time in order to do all kinds of uh, awesome things, like, uh, for example, record behavior that uh, will run during the static in init of your app, ahead of time uh, compilation, or even enable things for uh, native mode execution, register replace, uh, reflection, bytecode manipulation, and uh, so many more. And of course, they can also significantly help you get a much better developer experience through dev UI and dev services, which are all things that I'm going to cover uh, during this talk. Question number one, when should I consider writing an extension? Well, the main condition is when I have something that is reusable and I want to distribute across many projects or different teams and cases like that. Case number two, when I want to uh, integrate a new framework or technology. Case number three, when I want to perform some sort of uh, optimization, and I want to move things from uh, runtime to build time. You should always make sure that the functionality that you want to implement as part of an extension is not already covered either by Quarkus Core or by Quarkiverse. Quarkiverse is a collection of uh, community-driven extensions for Quarkus. It's available on GitHub and currently has tomes uh, of extensions. So make sure you check those places first before starting to write uh, the extensions on your own. Question number two, and the most important question, is why? And more specifically, why create an extension and not just write a single jar that I will distribute uh, across my, pro my projects? When you write a jar, 
that uh, a library, for example, that you want to share, how do you teach people how to use it? Do you just hand them a jar and a link to a document that describes how the uh, library is used, which more often than not will be out of sync with the actual jar ending up uh, in a mess? Quarkus extensions have the notion of starter code, which are actually templates that are rendered and uh, applied to your project the moment you add the extension to your project. So it's an excellent way to accompany the extension with example code that demonstrates how the library or the component is meant to be used. And it's not just code, it can be actually wiring code too. One of the existing extensions that makes uh, the best out of this feature is, I think, uh, Quarkus Kinoa, which is an extension that allows users to run JavaScript code on top of the uh, Quarkus application so they can have a JavaScript frontend running on top of a Quarkus backend as part of a single application, as part of a single native binary, or anything like that. To do something like that, you would need to tinker with a lot of different files. You would need to configure uh, the package.json of the app. You would need to configure things like uh, single page application routing and all those crazy things. I write an, in an uh, index HTML uh, and more, which is far from trivial. Quarkus Kinoa, by, allow by allowing uh, you to generate all those things the moment you add the extension to the project, saves both time and money. And this is a pattern that you can follow yourself. So you have a library, you want to, you want to share it, you can have as part of the library the, the starter code that will be auto-applied to, to your project. Uh, we are seeing uh, these days uh, this pattern becoming more and more popular. And uh, if you are following uh, developments on platform engineering, or even uh, if you've ever watched a backstage uh, presentation, most probably you recognize the, the, the rhetoric and uh, the pattern here. And of course, in order for someone to have success with uh, the library or the component that you created, it's not, it's not just about uh, figuring out how to write code and uh, how to write an, an example. It's also about tuning and configuring and all those, uh, all those things. Configuration wrapped as part of a Quarkus extension uh, is, uh, let's say, self-documented and automatically exposed and becomes visible as part of the Quarkus development console, the dev UI, as we call it, which means that uh, when you add an extension and uh, run Quarkus dev and start the dev console, you get the chance to see all the available configuration options, current values, default values, and things like that, which makes it so much easier to configure things. And it's something that promotes integration and collaboration uh, between your teams. And speaking of dev UI configuration, it's not the only thing that gets exposed. Its extension is able to expose even functionality. And uh, in this image, we are seeing how the Quarkus container image extensions expose the functionality of building container, containers through the dev UI. So you can just click the build container button and invoke that functionality. Other extensions in the Quarkus ecosystem do similar things. For example, Quarkus Kubernetes allows you to deploy your application to Kubernetes directly from the dev UI, which is a pretty neat feature. Or for example, Quarkus uh, gRPC allows you to invoke gRPC's uh, uh, in, uh, operations that target the gRPC service backed by Quarkus without having to mess with things like uh, gRPC kernel or, or other command line, command line uh, tools. So the functionality that uh, you create can be exposed to, to the console and uh, it can be anything you want it to be. You, you could possibly want to turn on and off communication channels, do things to your database, pretty much anything. Another important uh, thing that is related to the development experience and uh, Quarks extensions is dev services. So how do you easily develop against a service component, as, uh, against a service, your component depends on? 
Think this scenario, for example. You work uh, in an organization with multiple teams. One team uh, implements uh, a service and you need to, to consume it. How do you test it? Do you run the service locally? Do you have a dedicated environment where the service is run so that you can access it each time you develop, each time you test? Quarkus Dev Services try to solve this problem. And the approach that it takes is that it automates the process of test container management for development mode and testing. In other words, when you want to use such service, they can help you create on the spot uh, a Docker container that runs the target service and wire your application automatically to that service. For example, one of the existing components of Quarkus, extensions of Quarkus, Quarkus uh, JDBC Postgres. When you add it to your project and run the project uh, in dev mode, it will automatically create a container running Postgres and will connect your application to that Postgres database. And this is a pattern that it is not restricted to databases or messaging systems or anything like that. It's also a pattern that you can use for the services that you consume from within your organization. There are also more crazy things that you can do with extensions. And you can do things like uh, enabling a new framework for native mode. Before Quarkus, using Java in native mode was uh, a pretty cumbersome task, as you had to write really long JSON files that we all love writing, which uh, included things like uh, points where we use reflection and things like that. With Quarkus extensions, you can, uh, let's say, use a more reasonable way to achieve the same result, which is uh, using the, the APIs Quarkus provide in order to automate uh, reflection registration or bytecode manipulation and those kinds of things. Last but not least, through the extensions, one can generate all kinds of things that may be useful for their own application. So how do you deal with, with boilerplate? How do you generate resources, source code, those kind of things? Through extensions, you are able to pretty much generate anything you want from deployment descriptors, arbitrary text files, uh, source codes, bins that will be automatically added to your app at a runtime and uh, even directly byte code for your app. A last item that uh, is also mentioned here is build items. And build items uh, is a really interesting uh, part because build items is an object kind that it is exchanged between extensions, which means that through one extension, you are able to influence the behavior of others. One example is the Quarkus Kubernetes extension, which is meant to generate Kubernetes deployment uh, resources for your application. And there are tons of different extensions in the ecosystem which exchange build items with the Quarkus Kubernetes extension in order to influence what is actually getting generated. So for example, if you use a Quarkus uh, Kubernetes config along with the Quarkus Kubernetes extension, the Kubernetes config extension will influence the Quarkus Kubernetes extension so that uh, the generated manifest include uh, role-based authentication so that uh, your app is able to access uh, config maps and secrets, which is needed when you use the Quarkus uh, cube config module. Uh, we have, uh, right after this talk, we have the community both at 3. At uh, 4.35, uh, 430, we have uh, Holly delivering a talk on uh, contract testing with Pacta and uh, Quarkus. At, at 5.30, we have uh, Quarkus Security, OpenID, and uh, J JWT, uh, which I think is uh, Sergey, uh, Stefan, and, uh, and Stuart. OK, uh, I'm not sure if, if you have uh, any kind of questions. Well, I'll save them for the OK, room. yeah, yeah, OK. Okay, I hope you, you enjoyed it and uh, you found it uh, helpful. And uh, thank you very much.